<clears throat> Hello, welcome to another Boxing Predictions video. This is Terence Crawford vs Julian Dunko. So this upcoming weekend, there's a big unification fight between um, Terence Crawford and Julian Dunko. This is for the WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO and also Ring Magazine and Light Waterweight titles. Of course, there's a unification fight for the Undisputed um, Championship. If I remember correctly, this is the first time all the belts have been on the line, all the major belts if you count all uh, for including the Ring Magazine belt as well, if you see that as a legitimate uh, world championship. Um, I think it's the first one since uh, Jermaine Taylor versus Bernard Hopkins in 2000 and I think, uh, it's, I think it's 2007 if I remember correctly. Um, because, yeah, and Jermaine Taylor, uh, he I don't know, I think that's wrong, so I think it's 2005 if I remember correctly, but I could be wrong. It's either 2005 or 2007, but anyway, Terence Crawford coming to the fight. It's the current WBO and WBC Ring Magazine Light Waterweight holder, and Jason Dungo is the IBF and WBA uh, Light Waterweight Champion. Um, he sort of come out of nowhere in Dungo, um, I don't really know much about him, to be honest. Um, yeah, I know he came on the scene last year and won the IBF belt by knocking out the first round. Um, the guy he beat, I can't pronounce his name unfortunately, but I do know he was a shock knockout win. He followed up this win by beating Ricky Burns um, in his last fight to collect the WBA belt. And in that fight he looked very impressive as well. So now, of, of course, um, you would normally expect fighters sometimes to sort of just carry on uh, doing what they're doing. I mean, sometimes two belts is better than losing both of them. Some people, some fighters, say in the past, might wanna, might have a better fight on the horizon, but they decide to go um, the safer route and keep boxing, say lesser opponents. But credit to both Crawford and Dungo because they've both seen the significance of this fight, and that's why they've come to agreement and fighting. Um, obviously, uh, this weekend. Uh, Terence Crawford, um, he's collected uh, various belts in a couple of different weight classes. He was a former WBO and Ring Magazine uh, lightweight champion, beating uh, Ricky Burns when he was at lightweight and also uh, Eurogus Gamboa as well. Um, at at well, light welterweight, I know he's collected obviously various belts as well, like I said obviously WB, sorry, WBC and WBO belts. Um, but like in this sort of weight class, he hasn't really faced anyone of sort of no, I mean, he did ba face, um, I think it was his name was Victor um, po, Post, I can't really, I'm really bad with names sometimes, but I did know that was a unification fight last year, which of course he won, and uh, the WBC champion was trained by Freddie Roach as well, and of course Crawford beat him. Of course everyone says uh, Terence Crawford is in the top five, five pound per pound, uh, best fighters in the world. He's currently ranked the best uh, light welterweight by Ring Magazine and various other um, sporting posts as the best light welterweight, which is probably correct because when I've seen him fight, he's been extremely impressive. Um, he's got the power, he's got the speed, he's got the movement. Of course, um, people might say he needs to face like the best of the best. And of course, there's been a lot of rumours saying that after he wins, if you should save your beats and don't go uh, this Saturday um, to capture all the belts of course in his eyes got nothing else to prove which is probably correct because if you're collecting all the belts um, be it a weak opposition, a uh, terrible position or the best opposition out there if you beat, if you held all the belts in that weight class um, if, if he's going to do it just a belt sort of route then of course um, his uh, goal is, is achieved at that Walter weight. The rumours are he's going to move up to Walter weight and fa maybe face the likes of Manny Pacquiao, um, Keith Furman, Danny Garcia, Mia Khan, all those sort of names have been thrown about in, in the mix. Um, I'm not really sure the Mia Khan one's correct because he's not really a boxer at the minute, it's all that part time boxer whenever he feel like, feels like boxing really. But they're more active fighters like Danny Garcia, Jeff Horn, the new WO World Tour champion, could go for a WO um, uh, route again, third time in a row in three different weight classes. So there's fighters around um, four attempts Crawford for him to. Um, test himself against, I guess, the better rules, maybe more known fighters because, like I said, when I look through his um, record, yeah, he's undefeated as well, as is Ndongo as well. Um, he's only, I can only see sort of a handful of good opponents on there, but if he moves up to the World Tour division and fights the likes of the people I just mentioned, I could see him um, becoming one of the more, um, I'd like to say he would one day become best pound pound boxer in the world because it could happen if he beats, say if he goes to the worldwide division and he beats 
like Danny Garcia, Keith Furman, Errol Spence, IPF champion as well, Jeff Horn, Manny Pacquiao, that's even possible in some sense. If you can beat all those fighters, then you can probably make a case that he could be the best pound for pound fighter in the world. I know we've got Adagovki and uh, Levachenko as well, have got a good stake for that claim as well, Andre Ward as well. Um, but say if Terence Crawford, is, who's already a two-bit world champion, um, been some good fights along the way, and he's gone up to another weight class, which has got a lot of good opponents in it, and he's beaten a lot of good, tough fighters and the world champions as well. Um, it's a hard. It's not. It's, it would be a hard case for him not to say he's the best um, fighter in the world because three weight world champion could be undisputed champion as well. Walter weight, hard task, but beating those fighters I just mentioned that could be a real good claim to to sort of be put up there in the top. Uh, Pound for pound rankings. Um, the prediction for the fight, I do think Crawford will win. And like I said, I've only seen Dunko once. Um, I did see the knockout when he won the IBF belt last year, but that was a long time ago. And like many people do say, first round knockouts and shocks happen, um, I would like to say a fair bit, but they happen um, well yearly, don't they? So sometimes, say if a fighter wins by knockout by like a shock win, when they necessarily might not meant to be uh, might not meant to be won the fight. Sometimes they might get exposed down the line of there could be a limited fire, they could be not as good as everyone thought us, the hype might have been too much around their names, anything like those um, like I just said. And I'm not saying Dungo's a bad fighter because he boxed really well because Ricky Bowen in his last fight to capture the WBA belt. But I do think Crawford is a lot better in various um, ways. I know that sometimes age does, uh, does come into a factor. In Don Gobi is in his mid thirties as well, and Terence Crawford I think is twenty nine. And of course, sometimes you catch fighters at the right age or the right time in their careers. Technically, they're both in their primings because they're both undefeated, uh, both world champions as well. So you would probably see, if he was on out, if he was out sort of looking in, you would think, oh well, these two fighters are undefeated. Who doesn't matter about the age? Two world uh, to hold multiple belts in weight classes as well, and they find each other. That could be seen as an outsider um, to top quality fighters in the weight class. Whereas if you're a boxing fan, you know about the fights as well. Sometimes you could have a different um, perspective on it. Um, I don't think Ndongo is going to go down lightly because he's got a good defense. Um, I mean, knockout terms of has got power. Um, so is Ndongo. Not the sort of power you think like, oh, this guy's just, just going to yeah, knock you out instantly. Um, there's both risks for each other, obviously, in both both fighters. If you don't go does win, it'll be a great win for him. This guy's come out of nowhere and literally is like, has taken, in the matter of what maybe what a year or so, it's become undisputed well, uh, light waterweight champion, which is an exton which is a great achievement and a very hard achievement as well. You don't really see a lot of unification fights um, nowadays, especially for undisputed uh, championships as well. Like I said the last one was. Um, it could be 10 years ago, it could be 12 years ago, I mean, who knows, it might have been, like I said, it might have been 2005, it might have been 2007, but I do think 2005 from the Jermaine Taylor and Hopkins fight. Um, like I said, it would be good if more unification fights could happen, because I do think um, they are really uh, entertaining fights, just because all those battles on the line, I know there's a lot of um, controversy around certain organisations like the WBC, the WBA, IBF having uh, strict rules as well with their um, defences and all those sort of um, rules and regulations. But I just think as a good, as a boxing fan of my, like myself talking, just from my point of view, I think it's great to see that unification fights are happening and it shows who is the best fighter. Like imagine if in the world division, say if um, Keith Furman uh, defended his belts a couple of times uh, to keep the, w the WBC and WBA belts, say if Errol Spence beat Jeff Horn or something and captured the WBA belt, that would be a great matchup right there. Four belts on the line, two top quality fighters, both undefeated as well. That would be a great uh, fight. I mean, I know they're going to Golovkin, uh, Cano Alvarez fight upcoming in September. Um, that was going to be for the undisputed middleweight championship, but uh, Alvarez um, wasn't happy with the WBC for some reason. Um, so that belt is on the line, so that's only going to have the, w the WBA, IBF, I think IBO, and Ring Magazine uh, middleweight cha uh, championships on the line. Because, of course, um, Billy Joe Saunders is the WBO champ. So, I know people would say that's sort of like the undisputed sort of championship because many people don't really see uh, Billy Joe Saunders as a recognised champion because he's been very inactive and a lot of controversies around his defences and stuff. But that's a different story. 
But tune into, I hope you look tune into the fight on Saturday. It's going to be a great fight. It's on Sky Sports, um, the normal Sky Sports channels, I think, for UK viewers. Um, I think it's uh, showtime, I think, for um, the American viewers. I could be wrong, it could be HBO, but I probably am wrong, it could be HBO. But like I said, enjoy the fight. Write in your comments down below what you think of the fight. should be interesting. Um, I think it'll be a good fight as well. There's a good. Um, undercard as well, not the most exciting undercard in the world, but the, end, the undercard should be pretty decent and the main event should be a great uh, uh, fight as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, if you did give it like a comment and I'll see you in the next video.